In this video, we are forecasting some quieter than usual weather across much of the US. No major storms are forecasted in the near future, but some very interesting things are happening with the weather pattern down the road. We're gonna look at all the data and analyze what could happen in the future in your backyard. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. I know I haven't posted in a couple of days, but I needed to take care of a few things. Also, nothing really changed with my forecast from the last video, so I didn't think there was a need for an update. As expected, Thundersleet and freezing rain continued, causing a significant ice storm in the south central U.S. all the way up into the northeast. On the southern side, we had flooding and flash flooding, especially in Tennessee. And of course, that heavy snow we've been talking about did end up verifying all the way up into Canada. In fact, that southern trend we talked about in the northeast did come to fruition, bringing much of Massachusetts over four inches of snow, with some places exceeding eight inches. So that's all in the past. What about the future? That's what we're here for. Let's get into that right now. All right, this is Ryan's future radar breakdown. This is what the radar could look like as we go into the future. Starting off today around 1 p.m. Eastern. Let's push this bad boy just a little bit further down the road. There we are at 4 p.m. today. And as you can see, we do have some showers down here in Texas, around Dallas, all the way into Arkansas, Louisiana. And then, of course, running into the Appalachian Mountains over here in Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia, where some of that flooding happened just the other day. Now, this shouldn't add too much to the flooding problems, but keep an eye on those creeks and streams just in case. And then if you look at the backside of that precipitation over there, there is a tiny little bit of an area that could see some more freezing rain or sleet from this in Texas around Wichita Falls or just east of there. But for the most part, that's going to be a, a nothing burger. So let's keep sliding her forward. That heavier area of rain makes it over here into Mississippi around 2 a.m. tonight. And still, a lot of these places that have had problems with flooding are seeing some moderate to heavy rain. Once again, I don't think it's going to be heavy enough to cause major flooding problems, but there could be some isolated areas where the ground is really saturated that do see additional problems with this so just keep an eye on it we've also got this cold front coming down from canada that's going to bring some snow showers into southern portions of ontario and quebec and then eventually down into the great lakes regions and the northeast and looky here we got some moisture coming in into the pacific northwest look at me i'm talking about the pacific northwest because there's something happening over there i don't ignore you guys as much as what you think there's just it's just not as exciting over there i'm sorry but we will be having some gusty winds and some snow showers especially in the higher elevation around 2 a.m. on Sunday. So let's kick her forward even more. This little area of precipitation starts to die out as it moves through the Carolinas around 11 a.m. on Sunday. Some heavier snow squalls might be moving through upstate New York into Maine. Uh, some colder air behind that is going to be coming in. And if we kind of focus on the Pacific Northwest again, right there you go. Around Monday in the morning, we are going to see some more rain and possibly a more significant storm system move in up here. That's once again going to bring some heavy rain and some snow to the higher elevations while the rest of us are pretty much completely quiet out here across the lower 48. Uh, we do have a couple little, you know, snow flurries moving into Minnesota, but for the most part, everybody's going to be relatively quiet except for the Pacific Northwest uh, on Monday. How long is this quietness going to last, you ask? Well, let's start looking at the big picture weather pattern. All right, switching over to the global forecasting model now, looking at those red blobs and blue blobs. You can really see what's happening here. We have a big ridge building in the west, allowing for some warm air advection from the southwest. We have some zonal flow from northwest to south and east across a lot of the U.S. Uh, this is going to lock in some cold air up here in the northeast, and it's also going to set the stage for multiple little clippers to come down. Uh, so even though we're relatively quiet for a lot of the U.S., some of us are still going to be very cold. Some of us are still going to be see snow. It's just not going to be these major storms. Also, the western end of that ridge is going to allow for some more of that uh, uh, moisture to make it up into the Pacific Northwest as we go forward. Now look at this. All the way out on Thursday, March 3rd, we do have a little bit of that trough trying to dig deeper down south. Once again, this will set the stage for some of those isolated snow showers to make it a little bit further south here. And also, it's going to be very cold up in the northeast during this time period. But everybody in the middle, okay? Remember, the, the red blobs represent uh, usually a favorable weather and warmer weather. Everybody in the middle there is going to probably experience some very pleasant spring-like uh, weather during this time period. Watch this little trough trying to break its way into the West Coast, though. That's going to bring some more storms, some more unpleasant weather for you guys. And that is going to try to make its way all the way into the Four Corners region and set up our next 
big weather pattern. So once again, everything leading up to this point, everything for pretty much the entirety of next week is going to be for the most part pleasant for the vast majority of the U.S., except for those random little snow showers and the uh, little bit of moisture in the northwest. And that's going to be a nice break from the insanity for a lot of us. However, as we get into the next week, okay, here we are on Sunday, March 6th, we are going to see another uh, unsettled pattern setting up where we have the ridge and then we got the fridge right next to each other, okay? I didn't make that up. I heard that somewhere, but I like it, okay? And in the middle, that's where we could see some big storms happening. We're still in this pattern where I think we're going to see uh, central U.S. cutters come up through here and cause uh, major winter storms and potentially some big severe weather outbreaks as we go later on into March. This specific pattern is going to bring forward an actual storm more than likely uh, around the March 5th to March 9th time period uh, that will eject off to the north and east and cause snow for many. And then, of course, possibly some severe weather. And that's going to try to flip our weather pattern once again uh, to where we're stuck in this trough and ridge pattern. And we're just uh, back in the unpleasant cycle of storm after storm after storm. All right. So we looked at the red blobs and the blue blobs. But what's actually coming? What does our next storm look like? If we look at the surface map, remember what happens up top determines what happens down at the bottom. We see a storm forming on the edge of that uh, blue blob. Uh, that is likely going to bring some snow up into the Dakotas and possibly a lot of rain and much warmer weather through the uh, central and southeastern U.S. There is another storm that could potentially form right behind it along this boundary uh, and bring a ton of rain uh, to the mid-Mississippi Valley all the way up into the Ohio River Valley and southeast. But there's also a potential that that little area of convection could blow up into something much bigger. I've seen this happen a million times before, uh, especially in March, and that's something that we have to watch very closely. Uh, for the potential for severe weather. But look at the, uh, you know, just the constant inundation of rain and unpleasant weather for a lot of the central, eastern, and southeastern U.S. Uh, during this March 5th through March 10th uh, period. And then if we go all the way later on, we have another one forming right there in the middle uh, all the way back in March 14th. But this is, uh, this is cuckoo land, all right? This is la-la land. We don't trust the GFS uh, this far out. Never, ever trust the GFS at 384 hours. She'll always let you down. Okay, enough of that GFS. What about the Euro model? We love the Euro model on this channel, if you didn't know. It's just a different subset of parameters, and uh, I think the algorithm's a little bit better. Big system forming in the middle of the country, bringing snow on the northern side, rain and warmer weather on the southeastern side, just like the GFS showed. But the Euro has a little bit more of a handle on that second system like, that I was talking about. And this looks, you know, not necessarily more realistic, uh, but more similar to things that I've seen happen in the past with patterns like this in March, okay? So we got a big Big storm popping up here in the central U.S. around Monday, March 7th, bringing heavy snow on the backside, very strong winds, uh, and then, of course, a severe weather threat on the southeastern side down there in the warm sector. And by the way, that's a warm sector and a half. It's definitely going to feel like spring everywhere in front of this storm until that cold front sweeps through. And look at that cold front. This looks like a classic comma head setup with a big, strong storm with the tail that goes all the way down into Mexico behind it, and that would certainly uh, cause a very significant cold front. Uh, an initiated line of storms to go all the way through the East Coast, more than likely, uh, if that was to happen. But remember, uh, this is 200 hours away. Here's a look at that instantaneous flash rate. As you can see, as that low pressure center comes together and widespread storms pop up down here from Texas all the way up into Western Kentucky. And once again, if this is the actual path and trajectory of that low, these storms will be severe. Uh, and that's something that we'll have to track very closely as we go forward. So one way to look at the overall activity, okay, to look at uh, how active the weather is going to be over a certain given time is to just to look at the total precipitation how much rain is falling look here all the way through monday we are seeing no rain in all these areas that are in the white okay so it's very quiet but look it's not going to be so quiet up there in the bc all the way down into seattle towards portland and northern california as that rain and moisture comes in from the pacific ocean over there it's not going to be very quiet in the southeast either but it's also not going to be very crazy and then you can kind of see some of the moisture from those clippers coming down that we've been talking talking about. Uh, that will fall in the form of snow, of course. And look, we're quiet all the way through Thursday, March 3rd. Enjoy the pleasant weather because here comes the unquietness. This is likely going to end up being another big flooding event that we have to be concerned about. Uh, and this is going to be a long-term situation that affects a lot of the eastern U.S. Uh, all the way out to March 14th. Some people could see over 10 inches of rain, which will lead to flooding for some people. So the main axis of heaviest precipitation will shift as we 
we go forward, obviously. But I do think that we're in for some very stormy and wet times for everybody in the orange and red going later into March, okay? So just be ready for that. But in the meantime, a lot of us, the majority of us even, are going to be experiencing some very pleasant weather over the next several days. So get out there and enjoy it, okay? I am. This is one of the rare times of the year where I do get some downtime. I'm going to schedule haircuts, doctor's appointments. I'm going to do my taxes and, you know, all this normal person stuff that I usually don't have time to do when we're talking about major storm after major storm. Uh, so, you know, you're going to see a little bit less of me until this uh, pattern disruptor really starts to ramp up. But I certainly will be back on Monday. So that's the day after tomorrow with a complete March forecast. So I'm going to try to do a video where I forecast the entire month of March. Just talk about the general pattern and what I think is going to happen. It should be a very interesting video. So make sure you turn on notifications for that. As always, huge shout out to our members over here. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? And also, if you're one of our MVPs that makes it this far in my videos without exiting off, I have a treat for you. I am releasing merch. It's not ready yet, but if you go to shopryanhall.com right now and enter in your information, you will get an email when that stuff drops. And it's going to be a limited quantity type thing. And I think that it's going to go pretty fast. So if you want to get you a shirt or a jacket or a hat or a mug or anything like that, make sure you sign up now. And keep watching the entire videos, okay? Because I'm also going to have secret discount codes for you in the future. Okay, bye. Whoop.